Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 21 of the online course on nanophotonics, plus onics and metamaterials. Today's lecture is on applications of LSPR. So, here is the lecture outline, we will see how um, LSPR is used for scattering and we can use nano antennas for different or nanoparticles as nano antennas for different wavelengths. We will also see uh, the effect of substrate on LSPR. We will see the application of uh, LSPR in nano sheets. We will look into surface enhanced Raman scattering as well as we will also look into the applications of uh, LSPR in fluorescence enhancement and in tunable optical devices. So, we have seen this uh, diagram before that uh, nanoparticles they scatter light very strongly when they are at resonance. So, here are the different colors of nanoparticles depending on their size. Now, if you see the gold nanoparticles when the size ranges from 20 to 150 nanometer that is the diameter, the resonance wavelength changes from 520 to 660 nanometer. For silver nanoparticles of similar size, the resonance starts from 380 nanometer to 600 nanometer. Now, how you can calculate that at what wave what size of the particle, what is the resonant wavelength, you can actually look into this uh, formula that we obtained in the previous lectures. You can find out what is the scattering cross section, how you can calculate it from uh, alpha which is the polarizability of this tiny particle. So, this is the polarizability when you put it here, this is the expression. Similarly, you can also find out what is absorption cross section which is calculated as k imaginary part of alpha and this is what you can get ok. So, overall extinction cross section will be given as scattering plus absorption cross section. Now, the applications of uh, nanoparticles and LSPR that ranges from nanoscale devices and circuits this can be used for switching applications based on nanoparticles. They can be used as absorbers in plasmonic solar cells. You can also use nanoparticles as absorbers as I mentioned previously you can inject uh, gold nanoparticles with some you know biomarkers so that they can go and deposit on the tumor cell for a cancerous patient and when you shine infrared light through the human skin infrared light can penetrate and go and get absorbed by those nanoparticles and there will be heat generated and that will uh, allow the tumors to get killed by thermal ablation. You can also use them for biological and chemical sensing. So, in the presence of nanoparticles the near field gets enhanced. So, that also al allows the you know enhancement in biological and chemical signatures or footprints of any molecules or biological species. They can also be used for optical data storage. Now, nanoparticles gives you uh, sub wavelength control of electromagnetic radiation. So, that can help you um, ha have much more denser optical data storage. You can use this uh, force on single atoms to drag them somewhere in the near field. So, you can use them as optical tweezer. They can be used as directional nano antennas what we have seen in the previous lecture. You can also use them for maskless fabrication technology. Like if you have to make a metallic wire, you instead of using masks, you can line up nanoparticles and then you shine light and those nanoparticles at resonance will uh, absorb that light get heated up and they will melt and that will give rise to a wear ok. So, that is mask like fabrication technology ok. Now, let us look into some details of LSPR right now. So, let us study the effect of nanoparticle size. In the previous lecture I told that you know uh, surface scattering of oscillating electrons ok that actually changes the line shape of the plasmon resonance. So, the plasmon line shape gamma broadens with 1 over r. So, if you remember the expression of polarizability, you can also see that how this polarizability depends on this gamma which is the damping constant of the metal nanoparticle. So, if you write down the 
uh, permittivity of the metal like this 1 minus omega p square over omega square plus i omega gamma gamma is the damping constant here it is shown that as gamma increases you know the resonance get shorter means weaker and broader okay and the broader is also associated with the damping directly now when the nanoparticle size is smaller than the mean free path of electron in that particular metal then there will be some additional scattering losses which is surface scattering as it is shown here that gamma is basically inversely proportional to r so that is also seen here that this gamma will be now replaced by this new gamma which is this small gamma small gamma is this capital gamma naught that's the same thing a vf over r a is a constant usually it is taken as one vf is the fermi velocity of electrons and r is the radius of that nanoparticle now on the other side this is when the particles are too small than the, the mean free path of the electrons you get additional scattering loss there will be broadening in the spectra and the resonance becomes weaker on the other side when nan, uh, quasi static approximation breaks when the particle becomes too large greater than 100 nanometer in such cases there are additional effects we have also seen that alpha gets now additional terms coming from redshift which is due to the retardation and also there are broadening due to radiative decay and you can see both of them here that this is for silver nanosphere as you keep on increasing the size of the silver nanosphere from 20 to 40 to 60 to 80 you see you are getting a red shift because the resonance is moving towards longer wavelength or red side okay and they are also getting broadened so the broadening is because of this radiative decay and um, red shift in the larger particle is because of the retardation now what is this retardation in quasi static theory if you remember we assume that the phase on top of a particle does not change because the tiny particle is very tiny as compared to the wavelength of light but when the particle size increases and it becomes comparable or it becomes pretty large comparable in the sense like it's, uh, it's like lambda by 4 lambda by 5 something like that okay in that case you will see that you know over the surface of the particle there are some phase changes and that will not allow all the electrons to oscillate in sync or phase so that will cause the broadening and the redshift so these are the reason behind these two effects also higher order resonances will come into picture like if you see if you further increase the size of the gold uh, sorry silver nanosphere from 100 120 140 160 180 200 and 300 you see that the dipolar peak is getting weaker and weaker it is getting red shifted no doubt but it is getting weaker because it new new resonances are coming up because here you see for 80 there was a small shoulder so this was a higher energy peak shorter wavelength means higher energy so here also you can see that particular case that you are able to see that di this is the dipolar peak and uh, at higher energy you are getting another peak and with larger particles both higher energy and the dipolar peak are actually getting red shifted so this one got shifted here this one got shifted here further increase this got shifted here so they are all red shifting and they at 140 you see another shoulder is coming up and 160 you got another peak so dipolar then the next mode comes into picture is octopolar then the next mode comes into picture is sorry di dipolar quadrupolar and octopolar 2 4 and 8 okay and so on so with that you understood that it is possible to um, you know have different plasmon resonance with um, a single uh, particle sphere say uh, or single uh, material sphere like gold nanosphere or silver nanosphere but the resonance strength weakens and it also becomes too much broad so that is not a very very strong resonance so you can look into this particular chart and that will help you about the tunability of uh, localized surface plus one resonance so silver nanospheres scatter from 380 to around 600 as we discussed so 
gold nanospheres starting from say 520 to 660 as we discussed before but look at this nano shells or nano eggs they have very wide range of tunability starting from visible range to mid infrared you can tune with them similarly nano rods triangles cubes nano rice these are different different shapes of the plasmonic nano antenna which allows you to achieve plus bond resonance at different wavelength and this is the tuning range means just by changing the size of the particle you can go from this wavelength to this wavelength or this to this for nano rods so that is a huge kind of tunability now let us look into the mathematical derivation of how nano shell nan or core shell nanoparticles okay they give this tunability so if you consider a core shell nanoparticles so this is how it looks like this is the core and this is the shell so the core radius is r1 the overall radius is r2 so what is the shell thickness r2 minus r1 so this material the core material is epsilon 1 shell material is epsilon 2 and the outside surrounding media is epsilon 3 now in quasi static theory we have to remember certain things that the particle diameter so r2 or diameter so it's 2r2 should be much smaller than the wavelength of light then the incident field is time dependent but it does not vary specially on the particle so that is what quasi static okay and in that case you can actually use uh, electrostatic solution uh, by you know solving the laplace uh, equation for potential so this is how you can define the potential phi so ai and bi are the two constants which uh, correspond to monopole and uh, dipole terms so this is the general formula i means you can put i equals 1 2 3 so that will be the generic equation of potential in the three region now what next you have to apply the boundary conditions at the core shell and the embedding medium boundary to see and to find out what are these constants a1 a2 b1 b2 or now a3 b3 and so on okay now what are the boundary conditions always remember it has to be the continuity of the tangential component of the electric field so if you write that this is how you write it so at different layers this is how the tangential component should be continuous now with that if you put the second condition which is the normal component of the displacement field so normal component is so dou e dou phi by dou r is basically electric field and when you multiply with epsilon that is the permittivity this gives you d okay that is the displacement field the displacement fields are also continuous the normal uh, components so normal components you can uh, find out by taking the derivative with respect to r okay what is normal and the tangential one you can find with respect to theta that is shown here so once you do that you can put there is no monopole here so uh, the term a1 goes to zero only dipole will be formed so you can also find out what is there is no electric charge at the center so you can put b1 also equals to zero in the outer region in the space okay far away from the particle the potential phi 3 is minus e naught r cos theta e naught is the incident electric field so that also tells you that a3 is nothing but minus e naught so a3 and b1 you have determined okay and you can put it back into the previous equations and solve it to find out what is a1 a2 b1 b2 okay so once you do that you can obtain the potential phi i am not going into the derivation that that's easy but it's a bit lengthy so once you know that you can always find out what is e1 e2 and e3 that are the three different electric fields so these are the expressions you do the calculation or you can plot it using uh, some kind of uh, programming software like matlab or python you will be able to get these equations okay and then finally you will find out the electric field in the third region that is e3 so there you can see that you are actually having some components like uh, ea that is dependent on epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and also p p is nothing but the volume fraction so it's the ratio of the shell volume to the overall partial volume so this is the parameter that brings into the uh, ratio of shell and 
um, overall particle volume into the picture okay so epsilon a epsilon b are the two new terms which are nothing but this so these are basically some kind of simplification in the formula overall how we do that the polarizability of a equivalent dipole of this coarsel nanoparticle will be given as epsilon 3 alpha e induced so you can from that you can find out what is the alpha that is the overall you know polarizability that is induced by this particle and this is the form okay so 4 pi epsilon naught r2 cube and this is the equation I am not going through it details but you can compare this with the nanosphere and you will be able to see the difference and here epsilon 2, epsilon 3 and epsilon 1. Where is epsilon 1 in this? Uh, that is actually inside epsilon a and b. Okay. So, with this you can find out what is uh, your alpha. Once you know alpha it is very straightforward you can obtain the scattering cross section. So, sigma is a cross section. So, sigma scattering is 1 over 6 pi epsilon naught square k to the power 4 modulus alpha square. You put this, you get this particular formula. Okay? So, here one thing you can remember that uh, n that is a refractive index outside can be taken as square root of epsilon 3 because this surrounding media is a dielectric. So, you can simply take this one, not a problem. Similarly, you can obtain what is the absorption cross section that is basically k over epsilon naught imaginary of alpha. Th this gives you uh, the once you put alpha, you get this expression. So, overall, you will be able to find out the case. Now, the using this, you can find out the total uh, cross section. If now let us take one example of gold coated gold sulphide nanoshell it means the code is basically gold sulphide and it is coated by gold okay so if you take that kind of a um, particle uh, with 2 nanometer shell thickness okay look at this figure this figure uh, shows the calculation of the total uh, cross section so it is basically summation of uh, scattering cross section and uh, absorption cross section and this is a uh, gold coated A2S uh, nano shell. So, gold is the core and you have uh, gold sulphide on the outer shell okay? and the shell thickness is 2 nanometer and in these three cases okay, R2 has been changed from 4, 10 and 17. So, you can see as the overall size of the particle becomes larger, you get a red shift and the resonance also gets stronger okay? and uh, this circles that you see they are basically from the quasi static uh, theory calculation and the solid line is from the generalized me scattering theory. So, we have seen the me scattering theory possible for um, nanospheres, they are also possible for coarsel nanoparticles and you see that the um, quasi static theory is very close to the me scattering theory. It means for this size of particles, okay, quasi static theory is a very, very good approximation. Fine. So, if someone tells you, okay, this is the polarizability alpha, what is the condition for resonance? The condition for resonance is that when the denominator, the real part of the denominator goes to 0. So, you can write real of this going to 0. So, you can actually find out what is that. So, you put epsilon a and epsilon b into this equation, you can find out the condition R1 by R2 equals this. So, this is the condition for resonance. So, you again take that example of uh, gold coated um, AU2S nano shells okay? and in that case, you, you can see R core which is basically R1 divided by R total that is basically R2 is this one. So, you can change this ratio from 0 0.62 or something or 61 to 0 0.9 only this much variation you are able to change the resonance wavelength from 600 to 1000. Now, you can correlate with that kind of large span of nano shell that I have shown previously that it is possible to get a huge tunability by going to this kind of coarse shell nanoparticles where a metallic core is coated with a uh, metallic core is coated with a nano shell okay? and uh, this also can be done. So, in this case uh, 
this particular graph is for a AU2S nano shell coated with gold. So, here the core is AU2S that is a dielectric um, which is gold sulphide and it is coated by gold. So, here is another example of uh, a silica core which is kept fixed at 60 nanometer and then the gold thickness or the shell thickness has been varied from 5 nanometer to 20 nanometer. So, here it is 5 nanometer, here it is 20 nanometer. You can see for 5 it is here, for 20 it is blue shifted. So, thicker the gold shell, the resonance goes back towards the actual gold nanosphere resonance. So, more thicker you will make, it will go towards 520. Okay. This is how you can remember that what happens with this thing. Okay. So, always remember it is very simple formula. So, epsilon 1 is the mat core permittivity, the core can be gold or it can be or any metal or it can be even dielectric and epsilon 2 in this case we are considering that the core is basically dielectric and um, the shell that is epsilon 2 is having real and imaginary part that means it is a metal. Okay? So, this formula is particularly for one case that is dielectric core metallic shell nanoparticle. So, once again to avoid confusion let me reiterate gold coated AU2S nano shell means the core is AU2S that is gold sulphide which is basically a dielectric material and it is coated with gold that is why it is called gold coated AU2S nano shells. Now, there are different other particles also possible. So, you can see all different sh shapes and sizes are possible. These are spherical, these are all rod type, different types of rods. These are like 2D polygonal type, these are 3D polyhedral type, there can be branched, there can be you know uh, complex nanoparticles, then you can also have particles with hollow structures. So, all these different uh, plasmonic um, structures are possible which shows different kind of uh, LSPR properties and also they will have, uh, they, they, it will be difficult for anyone to calculate the you know resonance condition for uh, this complex shape particles, but for sphere and um, rods you will be able to approximate them using uh, quasi static theory and all. Remaining you have to go for um, different other methods. Here are some of the numerical methods that you can use. So, as I mentioned me theory can be used for spherical particles or um, you know infinite cylinders. You can go for transfer matrix method where you have multiple layers and you can multiply them. These are like different types of uh, uh, transfer matrix method is also kind of a computational method. Okay discrete DDA, discrete dipole approximation is what is shown here. So, a sphere or any other shape can be approximated with tiny tiny dipoles and then the response of each dipole is calculated in the presence of the incident electric field plus the electric field of the neighboring dipoles and in this case you will be able to do approximation for any complicated shape. So, DDA method is a numerical method that allows you to do for any complicated shape, but there is a uh, convergence criteria that mod n k d, d is the um, inter dipole separation that should be less than 1 for this calculation to uh, converge. Then you have finite element method or you can use FDTD, this is finite difference time domain method. So, th there are two different uh, approaches for calculating the scattering and absorption cross section. Always remember that uh, FEM is a frequency domain method where you are doing it solving it for every frequency whereas, in time domain method you can actually do it for one time pulse that covers a broadband of frequency and you can get the entire spectra in one go. Okay? So, these are different methods that does the same objective. Okay? Now, we studied all the single nanoparticles till now. Now, we can also look at what happens when the two particles come together. 
in that case the separation between the particle also plays a very important role. So, here you can see the absorption spectrum of uh, the dimer, two particles is called dimer. So, when the electric field is uh, polarized along the length of this nanoparticle axis, you see depending on the separation. So, the separation this is 100, 40, 20, 10, 4 and 2. So, it is kind of a non-linear interaction and it gets very stronger and you get significant amount of redshift when the particles are very close to each other. So, what happens when the particles are very close to each other? They interact, the near field of the particles, they interact very strongly with each other and that changes the plus bond, overall plus bond resonance of this coupled system. But the same particle dimer you take, but you change the electric field uh, direction okay, perpendicular to the dimer axis, you will see that the change is not that significant. Okay, It only uh, increases or you know to some extent for s equal to the it even gets weaker okay because you can see here th here the electric field is in and out of the plane and that is how each particle is more or less behaving like single particles okay the coupling between them is along this axis but there is no electric field along this axis so there is no essentially any effect of uh, coupling. So, absorption power if you calculate the absorption power for a 50 nanometer diameter particle. So, you can actually plot that okay, with a uh, function of this gap. So, you can see the absorption power significantly increases when the separation reduces for the electric field polarized along the dimer axis. So, this is a exponential fit that you can see p equals p naught plus a or alpha you can say e to the power minus s over l okay? and the decay length is also found out that is where the initial resonance decay up to 1 by e th value and this is the incident um, in light intensity used here. So, with this kind of uh, scale you will be able to measure what is that diamond like uh, separation between the particles because you have a kind of power law. This is a exponential decay. So, you can follow this decay pattern and you will be able to um, guess what is the nano scale um, separation between the particles. So, these particles were assumed to be all in air, but in reality that is not the case. In reality, your particles will be placed on a substrate. Now, when a particle is placed on a substrate, there is some effect from the dielectric substrate or the metallic substrate. Let us assume that here the substrate is a dielectric substrate. I okay, will tell you briefly what happens in metallic substrate as well. But here in dielectric substrate, when you put a particle close to each other, each charge will form a image charge. So, a positive charge will induce a negative charge, a negative charge will induce a positive charge. So, that way there will be a particle and there will be an image created inside the substrate. Now, if this part is if the particle and its image are very close to each other, that will only happen when the particle is placed directly on the substrate or it is placed very close to the substrate, you will see that they also start uh, interacting with each other. Now, that also depends on the polarization direction of the incident electric field. If electric field is polarized along this direction, the coupling will be strong that you have seen right now because this now becomes a dimer again. But if it is along this one that is orthogonal to the dimer axis, then the interaction will be weak. Here also you can see that when it is in air, you have more or less uniform electric field on both sides. But when you have a dielectric substrate, the field is basically confined in this near field zone. So, here also you can see that with reduction in size or gap sorry not size gap of the silver nanosphere to a dielectric substrate you are getting much stronger resonance and there is a redshift and this is a comparison for different uh, size and if silica substrate and gold and silver substrate what happens okay so, depending on whether it is a dielectric substrate or a metallic substrate the charge image charge formation will be different. Now, there can be other complex sized nanoparticles possible. So, something like you know um, it is a gold um, 
nano rod coated with uh, silver nano cuboid. So, this kind of complex uh, rods complex shapes are also possible you can write uh, discrete dipole approxim approximation codes to simulate the extinction property of this one. So, here is the property in water and chloroform. So, there is a distinct shift in the resonance property when there is change in the refractive index. So, that is what you can uh, expect that this nanoparticles um, resonance is very much uh, dependent on the surrounding permittivity. So, they all can actually um, act as a refractive index sensor. One more other thing is that you can also you know do a thorough analysis of these different peak positions you see there are four different peaks. So, when you see these peak positions you can see that what is basically creating these peaks. So, simulation helps you to understand this because in um, real life when these nanoparticles are dispersed in solution they some of them may be in this way some of them may be in this way. So, there is a possibility of you to excite the longitudinal mode or the transverse mode. So, transverse mode can be in two ways it can be in this direction or this direction, but the longitudinal mode is along the length fine. Now, simulation allows you to see that this particular mode is basically coming from the longitudinal L e means longitudinal edge excitation and other three modes are basically coming from the transverse excitation. And when you add them up, they will you will get this one. So, unpolarized light can be uh, assumed to be a you know combination of this polarization plus this polarization, or you can take a weighted average of it because there are two can two cases of transverse polarization. So you can make it like Le plus two Te by three, then you can get this kind of a graph. So this graph reproduces this one. So, that is perfectly fine and if you look into the electric field distribution at 4, this is the case. So, this is the longitudinal dipole, this one this is for the 3 peak number 3, this is a transverse dipole. Okay. Then you are also able to see these are octopolar modes type 1 and type 2. Okay. Now, quadrupolar mode you will not be able to see because that is basically a dark mode that can only be seen in the absorption spectrum okay not in the scattering spectrum now so these nanoparticles uh, plasmon resonance are also highly tunable depending on different shell so here there are two types of shell thickness one is side shell thickness ls so when you change ls this is how you can change the resonance peak positions and you can also change le that is the edge uh, shell thickness. So, you see the overall L s has got much stronger effect than L e right? because this actually changes the aspect ratio of the overall structure much significantly than this one because it is already a longitudinal structure. Now, what to do with this kind of nanoparticles and why do we learn this? Because if you make a 2D array of nano sheets that we have seen in the previous lecture also, in this case let us assume that we are taking a silver nano cuboid and it is basically uh, fabricated using a gold seed at the center. So, you start with a gold nanoparticle seed and then you start depositing silver on top of that and with time more and more silver gets deposited and you get a cubic shape. So, in this case the LSS side to side separation and H to H separation are same and when you measure it in an experimental spectrum. So, these are the actual distribution. So, here you see the, the main gap is around 10 nanometer right. So, you can also use a Gaussian kind of distribution to it and you can uh, simulate this kind of nano sheets extinction spectrum through simulation and you will get a very similar kind of a resonance characteristics. This simulation can be done using DDSCAT or you can use COMSOL or CST any other software numerical simulation tool. Okay. Now, why it is important because this kind of large 2D array of plasmonic nano antennas can give rise to free surface propagating modes. Just like graphene has got abundance of uh, you know uh, surface plasmon propagating on top of it when 
um, you can excite it. This also gives you this kind of surface plus bond propagation on the top of the surface of this closely packed you can say um, plasmonic nano antenna array. So, it is like a sheet. So, this is a sheet of this nice packing of nano antennas and you can get this propagating plasmon modes. You can also cut these sheets in form of waveguides and you can find you know surface plasmon propagation along the edges and along the center of the nano ribbon. So, these are plasmine nano ribbon and plasmine nano sheet. Okay? Now, why these are important? Because this plasmine nano sheets, as you can see, they have so many, uh, so much of region around this nanoparticles, which are having very strong local field concentration. So, if you use that for surface enhanced Raman scattering, you should be able to sense very tiny amount of molecule. Okay? Now, coming back to what is uh, surface enhanced Raman scattering, you remember the power of Stokes scattered beam. So, this is Rayleigh scattering, the same energy comes back. Okay? This is Stokes scattering. So, you jump from here, 0th state to the virtual high state and when you come back, you do not come back to the 0 state, you come back to a uh, higher energy state. So, there is a difference in the energy. So, this is called Stokes Raman scattering. The other case is also possible that you actually jump to the higher state from not 0th state of the ground level or you can st you can actually start from first state, but while you come back, you come back to the 0. So, you are you are releasing more energy while coming. Okay? So, these are different uh, vibrational energy state and th this particular case is called a anti Stokes Raman scattering. So, the power of the Stokes, so if you look into the Stokes scattering, oh, that is the most common one. So, in that case, P s omega s is proportional to or you can say is equal to n sigma r s and intensity. n is the number of Stokes, Stokes active scatterers. Sigma r s is the, is the scattering cross section of that atoms or molecules and i is the intensity of the excitation beam. Now, when you do this experiment or you do this probing of the molecule in the presence of a metallic nanostructure, near the nanostructures, the Raman intensity, this scattering, Raman scattering intensity increases dramatically and that happens in because of two things. One is the increase in Raman cross section due to change in environment of the molecule that is you can get up to like 10 to the power 2 order of enhancement because the particles uh, that scatterer surrounding media now has a metallic particle. Okay, So, the surrounding environment has changed and the second thing is coming from the increased electromagnetic field due to localized surface plasmon resonance. Now, that plays a very very important role. So, now this is the normal case when no nanoparticle is there, but this is the case when nanoparticle is present. You can see that two new terms got added up. What is L omega? This one L omega excitation square, okay, and L omega s square. What is this L? L is basically the uh, enhancement factor, which is E look over. E naught. What is E local? It is a localized electric field over the incident electric field. So, you are able to get very strong enhancement and because of this uh, two cases that Raman scattering is maximum when the excitation also matches with the scatterer uh, frequency. So, these two terms can be combined and you will get it to the power of 4. So, the enhancement that happens because of LSPR to the SERS is basically E local by E naught to the power 4. So, that is how it affects. So, now you can see the importance of this plasmin sheet that if you take this plasmin sheet and have electric field polarized along this axis, you will feel this all these hot spots. So, you can do sensing very very tiny even femtomolar, femtomolar amount of molecules or you know atoms can be sensed. 
Similarly, when you have the electric field along this direction, vertical direction, you actually form the hot spots in the vertical direction. And in a case of unpolarized light, you can actually have electric field mainly concentrated at the corners of the nano sheet. Okay? So, they all can be used for sensing. So, enhancement factor is basically dependent on the enhancement of electric field to the power 4. So, that is how these nano sheets are important. These are also scalable. So, you can work with a small area or large area, you will get similar effect. There are different effects of size and shape of the nanoparticles participating in this LSPR. So, you can think of this kind of a structure. Okay? So, these are analog to say liquid crystals. Well, when they are forming a horizontal sheet, they have a resonance around 842. But when these nanoparticles are all standing up, they form a vertical sheet. So, you will get a 555 nanometer wavelength. So, what you see here is that for this kind of vertical sheet, only at laser wavelength which is close to its resonance, you get the strongest electric field. For other cases, the electric field in the near vicinity of the particle is not that strong. Similarly, for the horizontal sheet, the resonance is at 842. So, only when the probing laser is close to that resonance wavelength, you get the strongest hot spots in between the particles. Other cases, these are not that strong. So, always remember for most effective SERS based sensing, the LSPR of the nanoparticle must be close as close as possible to the excitation laser wavelength. Next important application for LSPR is the enhancement in fluorescence. Now, what is fluorescence? If you look into um, Wikipedia for the definition of fluorescence, it is basically a two stage chemical process that involves absorption of a shorter wavelength or higher energy okay, light by a chemical fluorophore which is basically a protein or a carotenoid okay, and followed by the release of some of the absorbed energy as longer wavelength. Longer wavelength means shorter energy. So, this is where it is giving down shorter energy. So, this is called fluorescence. Now, again the excitation of surface plus bond resonance in nanoparticles result in nanoscale confinement of electromagnetic field near the metallic surface and that could significantly enhance the density or local density of optical states. So, that will also allow you to you know improve the fluorescence effect. So, such properties are widely employed to study the interaction between plasmons and fluorophores such as fluorescence enhancement and the realization of plasmonic nano laser. So, in plasmon enhanced fluorescence, there are two kinds of important mechanism or you can say enhancement mechanism. One is excitation enhancement, another is emission enhancement. So, how it works? You can see here that the ever essence of this phenomena is that the excitation emission efficiency eta of the fluorescence molecule is related simultaneously to the excitation efficiency which is gamma E x and the emission efficiency which is gamma E m. So, eta can be written as gamma E x times gamma E m. Now, what is gamma E x? Gamma E x basically is the ratio of the electric field intensity um, in the of the total field over the incident field in the position of the fluorophore. And what is gamma E m? That is basically the scattering cross section, ratio of scattering cross section in the presence and absence of the nano metallic nanoparticle. So, that way you are able to boost up this particular eta by boosting both these two. So, there is one particular ex uh, example in this paper where they have used a gold nano rod and uh, they have used the excitation, the transverse excitation to match with the excitation wavelength 
so that is where they got one resonance and they have also got the longitudinal surface plasma resonance to match the emission wavelength so this is how they were able to boost up both and that has dramatically boosted the efficiency of you know fluorescence so that is eta was boosted by double impact on excitation efficiency as well as emission efficiency Pre prior to this paper what people used to do people used to either boost up this one using one nanoparticle lspr or i either this one or this one or worst case uh, to get a uh, compromised not worst case i should say um, to get a compromised optimum they used to choose a lspr which is in the middle of these two wavelengths okay but in this particular paper they found a way to excite both uh, from the same particle because they were able to excite when you put unpolarized light on this particle both this and this will be excited right because transverse and uh, longitudinal both um, plasmons will be excited so you will get um, boost in both these two efficiencies so that was one very good example of using nanoparticles for fluorescence enhancement next we move on to um, some examples of using um, nanoparticles or lspr in electrotunable fabry perot interferometer now what is a fabry perot interferometer you must have known this this is basically a cavity formed between two mirrors there is a dielectric media in between which is having a permittivity of n and this is the length l of the cavity so when some light enters this cavity it goes through multiple like reflections and only those light which only those wavelength which satisfies the constructive interference condition that is the round trip phase should be integral multiple of 2 pi they are able to come out of this others other wavelengths will get you know cancelled so you actually send a broadband light you will get a single narrow transmission peak so this is how fabry perot interferometer can be used as a uh, selective transmission filter now how do you change the transmission wavelength either you have to mechanically adjust the length of this cavity or you have to physically change the cavity medium n then this particular transmission wavelength will change now nanoparticle based solutions or plasmonic nanoparticle solutions allow you to achieve a electrotunable fabry perot interferometer cavity so what you can do i'll quickly go to the structure so you can use two metallic electrodes transparent metallic electrodes like ito and you can use a aqueous solution or water solution filled with gold nanoparticles which are having negatively charged they are having some kind of ligands associated which keep them negatively charged now when your electrodes are negatively charged nanoparticles are also negatively charged they repel each other so nanoparticles will be in the uh, solution in the cavity itself but light can simply enter and reflect some part will get absorbed but as soon as you make the electrodes positively charged what will happen this negative um, nanoparticle negatively charged nanoparticles will come and assemble on top of this electrodes and they will start forming a array 2d array and as they keep on getting denser and denser the reflectivity of the 2d array will get stronger and that is the reason why i have shown those kind of 2d assembly so here also you are able to pack a very dense assembly of particles 2d sheet of particles and they form like mirrors so these are basically electrically tunable mirrors and be using this you can change what should be the transmission wavelength so one thing i forgot to mention here is that other than this one and this one the third method is to change the reflectivity r1 and r2 of the uh, fabry perot interferometer so in this particular case we are using nanoparticles to change r1 and r2 of the mirrors okay that also allows you to change the reflectivity so this is the transmittance formula t when absorption in the cavity is non zero so you have 1 over 1 plus capital f sin square delta by 2 what is k k 
k square 1 minus a a is the absorption and r square minus 1 minus r square r is basically the reflection coefficient of this mirrors we are taking identical mirrors ok and capital F is the coefficient of thinness that can be calculated like this ok. So, what is important here to see that by changing the voltage you are able to bring more nanoparticles and that will allow you to build a mirror with tunable reflectivity. So, this is one of my uh, research work which has been published long back and uh, with that I will show you some of the results. So, here the delta which is the round trip phase difference ok that also can be seen is basically a function of r. So, by changing r you are able to change this one as well. So, when you compare this with uh, here you see this is the plot of the transmittance for a specific lambda. So, I am taking 800 nanometer nanoparticle size is chosen to be 20 nanometer these are gold nanoparticles and uh, A is the lattice spacing which is 2 R plus A that is the gap 2 R is the diameter plus A 4 R 4 is the gap between this particle surface to surface gap ok. So, when you do this ok you are able to um, match the effective medium theory calculations with classical uh, fabry perot interferometer cavity and you are able to see that you are getting peaks peak transmittance at integral multiple of pi. So, at p pi p plus 1 pi p plus 2 pi or p minus 1 pi you are able to get the transmittance. So, these are the cases where your phase round trip phase is getting integral multiple of 2 pi ok. So, these are look at b. So, here what is the difference here lambda is same the particle radius is same but the gap between the particles are changing. So, gap between the particles changing means what the coupling between the particles will change. So, the overall reflectivity of that surface that is created by this array of particles will also change. So, here you can see this is for g equals 30 means the gap between the particles is 30 then 20, 16, 12, 8 and 4. So, as you can see when it is 4 means the particles are very close to each other you can see very strong effect of this resonance Fabry Perot interferometer cavity resonance and that is how you get a very high quality factor. But as you keep on increasing the gap between the particles the mirrors are becoming weaker ok mirror reflectivity is getting down. So, your cavity quality factor is also coming down, but this does not actually show you the wavelength tunability yet. Let me show you that as well. So, here you get g equals 4 g equals 8. So, this is the wavelength tunability here you can see the cavity length is fixed nanoparticle size is fixed ok cavity length is uh, 1000 nanometer that is 1 micron ok. So, you can change the nanoparticle sizes from 4 gap between the nanoparticles from 4 nanometer to 8 nanometer you can see you are able to uh, move from here to here. You can also see a linear scaling like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the way you change the gap. So, you are also able to continuously tune the transmittance peak. Okay. Though the peak transmittance value also reduces because uh, that is a kind of price you will pay with this particular cavity. Because when the mirror quality comes down, okay, so the quality factor also gets affected as we have seen here, but the electron uh, wavelength selectivity or wavelength tunability is continuous with this particular uh, different gaps. So, how you can change? You can change the um, potential on the electrodes and that will give you uh, electrically tunable Fabry Perot interferometer cavity. So, these are just examples of one or two uh, tunable optical devices that we can make using uh, this. So, if you are interested in much more of this uh, kind of electrically tunable uh, LSPR based devices or their applications, you want to know more, you can always discuss with me by dropping an email to this particular email address. So, here we will stop. Thank you. <laughs>